wrap it around one hand, then grab a hold of the other end, and then you're just going to hold it kind of at quite a wide stance for it, and you're just going to take it up and over, tapping behind and tapping in front. So you're just going to take it forwards and back 10 or so times. As you're doing this, think about drawing those ribs down to your pelvis so that the movement is coming entirely from your shoulders and you're not flaring out as you take the strap back. You're keeping a nice upright, straight and tight body. I'm just going to put you guys on gallery view so I can see you all as well. <laughs> Um, so keep going forwards and back, and as you do this, if you find that your um, grip gets a little bit easier, or your width gets a little bit easier, you can just take half a twist in, narrow that grip slightly, keeping those arms nice and straight, challenge your range of movement. So we're just going to do one or two more, forwards and back. and then you can release yourself from that strap. Just chuck it to one side, you might need it later on to help you with some of the poses, um, but otherwise, just chuck it to the side, you won't need it for now. So we're gonna heel toe our feet out to the edges of the mat to find a slightly wider stance for our squat. Inhale as you lift the hands up above the head, palms together at the top, and then we're gonna come down into our garden pose. So for many of you, you might find your heels lift or you can't quite get as low. Don't worry, just think about having a nice upright torso, so roll those shoulders back and down, sit back into the heels where you can, and then use those elbows once you're there, in on the inside of the knees, pressing the palms together, opening up the hips. Just take a few deep breaths. And then if you want to add a pulse to it, you can to just ease into those hips. And if you want to take your hand to the floor now, so taking your left hand to the floor, we're going to inhale as we lift and twist with our right hand up towards the ceiling. Exhale, release. And then right hand to the floor, inhale to lift and twist with the left hand up towards the ceiling. Exhale, release. So we're just going to do three of these, each side, moving with your own breath and your own time. Last one each side and then come back to centre. You can pulse again, just take another deep breath, get comfy in the bottom of that squat, and then take your hands to the floor. Lift your hips high to the sky, and heel toe your feet back underneath. So you're coming into your Uttanasana forward fold. From here, pick up, softening the knees, drawing the chest over the thighs, crown the head towards the floor, opposite hand to opposite elbow, and just gently rock from side to side as you start to get into the back of those hamstrings into those glutes and the hips and the lower back. This is a brilliant pose if anyone ever suffers with lower back pain. And then we're just going to relax the hands, place them on the floor either side of your feet. From here, inhale to lift your heels, bring your knees towards your chest, nose to knees, and then you're going to exhale as you push up and back into that forward fold. Think about pushing into those hamstrings, feel the stretch, and then inhale as you come back down into that crouch curl, position. We're going to do two more. So inhale to lift, exhale to fold or crouch, inhale to lift one last time and then this time take the hands to the front of the mat, walk the feet all the way to the back of the mat, find your down facing dog position. So first soften the knees, press the crown of the head through the arms towards the floor, chest comes through the arms, and you're thinking about having a nice broad upper back. So pull those shoulder blades apart, release the neck from your shoulders, and just let your head hang towards the floor. You can add a pulse here. Just feel that stretch in your upper back. Feel that nice, strong, sturdy position that you've now created by broadening that upper back. So if you're hunched in like this, it's not doing your neck any good. So try and release that neck from your shoulders. Take a nice deep breath all the way in. And then as you exhale now, begin to extend through the legs. So stay still with the upper body and just alternate as you walk the dog from side to side, pressing the heel towards the floor, opening up those calves, those hips, those hamstrings. Take a few deep breaths. And then we're going to 
going to take a body flow. So come to still in your down facing dog. You're going to inhale as you roll forwards, drop the hips, look up, find cobra. And if cobra is too much for you, you can always take this back down to sphinx on the forearms, depending on how it feels on your lower back. In cobra, point the toes, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the inner thighs, support that lower back, pull those shoulders back and down. Eye gaze forwards, take a nice deep breath in. And as you exhale, tuck the toes and press back to down facing dog. We're going to do two more of those. So inhale, roll forwards, drop the hips, look up, find cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, press back to down facing dog. One more. Inhale, roll forwards, drop the hips, look up, find cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes, press back to your down facing dog. From here then, just drop the knees to the floor. Coming onto your hands and knees, hands under shoulders, knees under hips. We're just going to do five cat cows. So you're going to inhale as you squeeze the shoulder blades together, pull the chest through the arms, but up towards the ceiling, and find that arch shape with your spine. And then as you exhale, round through the spine, moving vertebrae by vertebrae, pulling the shoulder blades apart, pressing the ground away, sucking the navel up and back. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round. Two more on your own. Inhale to lift. Last one. and then just return back to a neutral position. From here, we're going to do a bit of a shoulder strengthener to help with um, stability and also to help um, alleviate pain. So it's important that we have strength within our joints to support our bodies. So just keeping the hands underneath the shoulders, option one, you're just going to keep the arms nice and straight and you're going to dip the chest through the arms toward the floor, squeeze those shoulder blades together, and then pull the shoulder blades apart to lift the chest away from the floor. So option one, you can do this on your hands and knees. We're aiming for about 10 reps. Option two, if you want something harder, step the feet back, come into a full plank pose, and exactly the same thing, just with a little bit more weight behind you. So pick your progression. If you've already started, you're probably over halfway. We're just doing roughly eight to 10 dips and lowers. And as you can see, it's a very small movement. It's coming from entirely from my upper back. My lower back is really quite neutral. Just do a couple more for me. And then come back to neutral. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. We're going to take that right hand, or sorry, left hand through the right arm, bringing the shoulder to the floor, looking up underneath the armpit, finding yourself in thread the needle pose. So reach through. Option one, to stay exactly here, looking up underneath your armpit. Option two, take that right hand up and behind you. See if you can grab your inner thigh of your left leg and keep twisting to look over that right shoulder, so almost behind you. Take two more deep breaths, wherever you're at. Exhale completely. And then slowly unravel yourself. Come back up onto the hands and knees and we'll switch sides. So right arm now goes through the left. Shoulder to the floor, look up underneath your left armpit. Take a nice deep breath in, take that hand behind you if you want to go to option two, remember. Grab a hold of that inner thigh. Keep lifting and twisting to look over that left shoulder. Two more deep breaths. Exhale completely, and then slowly bring yourself back up onto your hands and knees. Take your hands slightly further forwards. This time we're going to sit back into heart melting pose. So we're going to drop the chest towards the floor, forehead towards the floor. Feel the stretch in the underneath of your armpits and also in your thoracic spine. So if you don't feel enough of a stretch, you can always opt to put your chin on the floor and come into something that resembles more of a puppy pose. Take a couple of deep breaths here. And then if you want to take it further and drop into full puppy pose, bringing that chest toward the floor, you can. 
Just make sure that the bend is coming from the low, the upper back and your lower back is completely neutral. So your knees should be stacked underneath your hips. Take two more deep breaths wherever you're at. And then slowly come up onto your hands and knees. Hands are in the front two corners of the mat. Tuck the toes, press back to your down facing dog. Pedal out the feet. Take a moment there to just adjust the body again. If you want to pulse through the shoulders, that's also another option. And then from here, we're going to come into a lizard lunge. So we're going to take right foot outside of right hand as we inhale. Option one, for more of a stretch, drop the back knee to the floor. Send that right knee out to the side whilst keeping those toes glued to the floor. And just hang out here, getting into the groin. Option two, for more of a strength and stretch. Lift the back knee off the floor, squeeze that quad, send the heel back behind you and reach the heart forwards. You can just rock back and forth whilst keeping those toes glued to the floor. Take two more deep breaths wherever you're at. And then option three for either option, knee on the floor or knee off the floor. See if you can come down onto your forearm. So if you've got that knee off the floor, this is a little bit harder. If you're a little bit higher because you've lifted that knee, so really squeeze that quad, keep that knee lifted. Keep rocking back and forth if you want to, or you can just stay static, it's up to you. One more deep breath wherever you're at, and then everyone's going to drop their knee to the floor, come back up onto their hands, and we're going to reach up and back with right hand to left foot, bring that heel in towards the glute. So this is where you might need your um, yoga strap, or you can just take half a step in wherever you are. Pulse that heel towards the glute, and then when you're ready, just hold for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release. Come back to that lizard lunge pose, and then lift that back knee off the floor. Step back to down facing dog. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So left foot comes outside of left hand, Option one, remember, drop the knee for more of a stretch and just feel yourself in that groin area, sending that knee out to the side. You can wiggle back and forth, whatever you need to do for today. Option two, lift that knee off the floor, send that heel back behind you, squeeze that quad. So be nice and active throughout. Reach the heart forwards and you can just start to rock back and forth, getting into that groin area. Take a nice deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then for those of you that want to go lower, come down onto your forearms. Even if you've got your knee on the floor, you can do this too. And again, keeping those toes glued to the floor. Keep rocking back and forth or easing into that hip. One more deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly drop that knee to the floor in every case. Hands underneath shoulders again, and then we're reaching up and back, grabbing a hold of that right foot this time with the left hand, bringing that heel in towards the glute, pulsing it just a few times, and then holding for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, release. Step back to your down facing dog position. Pedal out the feet and we'll take a body flow. So inhale, roll forward, drop the hips, look up, find cobra, and then sit back in extended child's pose. Just relax off those shoulders, relax off that upper back, take a few deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, and then slowly inhale as you come up onto your hands and knees, tuck the toes, press back to your down facing dog. From here, option to step or hop forwards to your Uttanasana forward fold. So you're going to bend the knees, look forwards, and then jump. See if you can find some float if you're jumping. Finding yourself in Uttanasana forward fold, you're going to then heel toe your feet out to the edges of the mat. Find your spot stance. Inhale as you come all the way up. Palms together at the top, and then exhale as you come down into your garland pose. Take a nice deep breath all the way in. Exhale, release the hands to the floor, and then you're going to step or hop back 
to plank position. So from here, we'll take a vinyasa. So option to drop the knees. Exhale, low plank or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, press up to cobra. And then exhale as you push back to your down facing dog. We're going to take this now into pigeon. So taking your right leg high to the sky, three leg down facing dog. Bend at the knee, open up that hip, come into that scorpion variation. Play with that range of movement. Hang out here if you want to. And then we're going to take that knee all the way through to the front corner of the mat. Sliding our back leg back behind us, untucking the toes and coming into a nice upright seated pigeon. So if you need to, you can use a block or a pillow to support that left, sorry, that right sit bone so that you're not rolling over onto it, try and keep your hips nice and level. So aim to pin that right, that left hip bone to the right heel and that right sit bone to the floor. With the hands, option one, if you need to um, focus on opening up your left hip flexor, you can just hang out here, take a few deep breaths, pressing the ground away, really stretching out the front of that hip. Option two, you can come into sleepy pigeon, bringing the body forwards over that leg, and taking a few deep breaths. Option three, you can come and take this into mermaid pose. So you're going to come back to that upright pigeon. You're then going to grab that left foot with your left arm, hook the toes in towards the elbows, and then you're going to take the hands back behind you, interlace the fingers. Try not to roll over onto the sit bone, try and keep that left hip, hip bone glued towards that right foot. Take the eye gaze forwards, Try and keep everything nice and upright. Take a few deep breaths wherever you're at, whichever variation you pick today. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, release the leg. Come back to the front of the mat with your hands and then step back to your down facing dog position. Pedal out the feet. And we're gonna do the same on the other Side. So we'll take a vinyasa first. So inhale, roll forwards to high plank. Option to drop the knees. Exhale, low plank or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, press up to cobra. And then exhale as you tuck the toes and press back to your down facing dog. So we're taking the left leg up and back this time into a three leg down facing dog. Bend at the knee, open up that hip flexor. Keep rotating through the hip. Figure out that range of motion that you have today. And then when you're ready, bring that leg all the way through to the front, right, left corner of the mat, sorry, untuck the right leg, find yourself in that upright seated pigeon, and press the ground away. So remember, option one, you can stay here, supporting yourself if you need to with a block or a cushion underneath that sit bone, and just opening up that hip flexor. Option two, you can come down into that sleepy pigeon pose, bringing the body over that front leg, forehead to the floor, and just chilling out here. Option three, you can come into mermaid pose on the other side. So make sure you have that nice, firm, solid base, and then reach back, right foot or toes come into the crease of that right elbow, and then you're reaching up and back, interlacing those fingers, and just taking three or so deep breaths wherever you're at. Really focusing on keeping that right hip bone pushed down toward the floor, Last deep breath all the way in. And then exhale, release that left leg. And from here, we're going to go straight into half an order of the fishes. So you're going to take that right leg all the way around and over you now, wherever you're at. And option to keep the left leg bent as, as it is now, or you can extend it out in front of you, wherever mobility allows. Just try and make sure that you've got both sit bones connected to the floor. You're then going to take left arm around right knee, inhale to lift. Exhale to twist to look over that right shoulder. Three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly inhale as you unravel. We're going to unravel the legs and switch sides. So now the right leg goes under. Left sole of the foot comes on the outside of the right knee, making sure both sit bones are connected to the floor, taking a hold of that right, uh, sorry, left knee with the right arm, inhale to lift and twist, exhale as you look behind you. Three deep breaths. Now 
last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly come all the way back to the front of the mat. Unravel the legs and come into a nice seated position. From here we're going to come into our seated figure of four pose. So we're going to take the uh, right, sorry, left foot over the right knee, crossing the ankle over, and then scoot the bum in towards the heel. From here, reach the heart forwards towards that left shin bone, and just take a couple of deep breaths. One more deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then scoot yourself back out and switch sides. So left foot goes down, right foot comes up and over, crossing the ankle over that left knee. Scoot the bum in, shuffle yourself around and try and reach that chest for your shin. Three more deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, and then scoot yourself back out, unravel the legs, and then we're going to come into a seated position while we take eagle arms with our, with our arms. <laughs> so we're going to take the left arm under, the right arm over, cross at the elbows, and then wrap the hands together. See if you can wrap, if you can't get your hand all the way around, the aim is to get the palms of the hands to match together. But if you can't, you can use a strap or you can just grab a hold of your thumb wherever you're at. Wherever you're at, from here, take a nice deep breath in, and as you inhale, lift the arms up, away from the body or away from the chest, so you're reaching up towards the ceiling with those fingertips. Three deep breaths. Relax the arms back down as you exhale on that third deep breath. Shake them out as you unravel and then switch sides. So right arm comes underneath left this time. Crossing over at the elbows, wrapping the hands together once you've found them. Inhale to lift. Feel that stretch now in the left shoulder, probably in the rotator cuff. Three deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale, release the arms, shake them all out, and then we're going to take the legs, unravel them underneath us, scoop the bum in towards the heels and come down onto our backs. Bringing the knees in towards the chest, just gently squeeze them in tight as you rock from side to side, hugging them with both arms, massaging that lower back. When you're ready, take a hold of the left knee with, the, with both hands, Exhale as you extend the right leg all the way to the floor, and then inhale as you pull that left knee in toward the center of your chest. Take a nice deep breath all the way in. Exhale. One more deep breath all the way in. Exhale. Slowly inhale as you bring both knees back to center. Switch over the hands. Exhale as you extend the left leg all the way to the floor this time. Inhale to pull that right knee in towards the center of your chest. Take two deep breaths. When you're taking two deep breaths on the right side, inhale to bring both knees back to center again. Take the arms out wide and think about gluing those shoulders to the floor as you press the palms into the ground. From here, as we exhale, we're going to drop the knees all the way over to the left and then inhale to lift and twist the head to look toward the right. You can let gravity do the work, press down on the upper thigh or you can extend that top leg and cradle it in the opposite hand. Yogi's choice. Wherever you're at, just take five deep breaths. Farming the body down as we head toward the end of our practice. And 
last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then slowly unravel that leg. Inhale to bring the knees and the head back to centre. And then you're going to drop them over to the other side. So as you exhale, drop the knees to the right. Inhale to lift and twist the head to the left. Making sure both those shoulders are glued to the floor. You can let gravity do the work. Press down on that top thigh or extend that top leg and cradle it in the opposite hand. Yogi's choice. Five deep breaths. Deep breath all the way in, exhale, and then slowly inhale as you lift your head and your knees back to centre, hug the knees in tight, tight, rock from side to side, enjoy that little massage on the lower back, and then whenever you're ready, just gently roll over onto the right side of your body, bring yourself all the way up to seated, and find yourself in the centre of your mat. We'll take one final deep inhale as we lift the hands up above the head, palms above, touch together. And then as we exhale, we'll bring the hands to the forehead, kind thoughts. To the lips, kind words. To the heart, kind feelings. Namaste.